All right, so this is the Humvee. It's uh, 1123, we're going to Armada Springs. At least in the back, I'm not sure about the front. The front actually clears okay, and the camber of the tire is not that bad. The back, um, unfortunately, is, let's see, uh, like top out, however you wanna say that, like um, leaned out at the top. And so uh, it's weird alignment, the car's riding weird, and it's basically a huge spring designed for a 10 or 12,000 pound vehicle which this is not anymore. It's around maybe five, five and a half. So um, there's pretty much straightforward stuff right off of YouTube. Um, that's where I got my information, but did the same thing as some other folks. Um, took out this, like remove the, remove the wheel, obviously. Took out the plug. Um, forget what size that was. It looks like it was a 916 um, right in there to get the uh, half shaft retainer bolt out. Um, was careful not to drop the washer in there. That was a good tip from uh, some other folks. Um, then here, let's see, this will this will drop out. I drained all the oil um, out of the portal axle and just got the U joint separated or the ball joint. Um, that was basically I used a clamp to force the uh, the uh, whatever you want to call this thing into place um, and hold it there on the bolt head. Put a lot of pressure on it. I used a torch for just a little bit, which was actually kind of difficult because you don't want to burn up your rubber, but you can kind of get it to wrap around the edge here, put a little heat on it. Um, about the time I was starting to feel like I was putting a lot of pressure on it and I actually covered it with my hand to kind of protect, it popped. So uh, now we're on our way and I've just got to get this uh, portal leaned out and disconnected here. And that way this, uh, I guess a uh, control arm can bend down far enough to get the spring out of there. Right now it's still retained by the shock. That's the next thing I've got to loosen. And then it should all come out kind of in sequence, but I'm going to be taking my time. Don't want it exploding in my face, so to speak. Here's a shock tire bolt on the 1123. It's 38 mil. Um, about 38 or 36. It's the wrong size. So that'll be something to do tomorrow. But uh, anyway, half shaft's out, and I'm gonna take this off, check out, make sure my uh, axle retainer nut is good, and then it'll be out with that, in with the uh, other one, a couple modifications probably, and we'll put it back together. All right, so the spring has just let go. Uh, no more potential energy in that thing, which is nice. Um, what I did is I took some line, um, nothing fancy, but this is just some paracord, and lashed it around the spring, and then to here, I didn't think it would go flying, but just in case I tried to, that would arrest its flight. Hopefully before hitting me in the face, so I can get more rope. Teeth are expensive. So this thing, um, it just took a little persuading here with the pry bar to knock it off its seat. And here's the shock, came right out. Um, I was able to unpin the top. It's a 38 millimeter socket. And then uh, the bottom was unloaded. That's 24 mil and uh, once those were loose, I was able to then use the pry bar within the spring to compress the shock and get the geometry to clear so it would drop out the bottom and I could get the spring out. So that's where we're at now. Pretty much uh, that's it. Now I got to fit up the new spring on the seats. The part that's circled here is the retainer clip for the, I guess, the hub nut or axle nut, whatever you want to call it. Um, there's only a couple teeth that engage, but mine were. I think this is pretty important to make sure. Uh, you've got that engaged before you start seeing any kind of speeds. This is the Armada spring. It's a, I guess, all year's work. It's a rear spring for the four-wheel drive vehicle, which is important. Um, the wire diameter is 0.81 inches. Um, and the whole thing, bottom to top, is 16 and a half. So um, if you have the 15 and a half, which I bought first by mistake, that's the two-wheel drive. And uh, I forget if there's a 17, but basically this is what you want, 16 and a half. And I expect there's gonna be either some grinding in here or up there, but um, that's how everything is on this thing. So we'll make it work and if it sucks, we'll change it back, but it should be pretty cool. Sort out how much metal's gotta move and this thing, uh, the seat for the top of the shock housing. Um, bottom fits, but the top measures in at uh, 129 mil. And you see here that if I put that on the new spring, it's about that much metal has got to come off. So I'm gonna split that between the sides. That's gonna be an extra pain in the butt, but that's what's gotta happen. So I've gotta grind out about that much metal uh, from the inside of the spring to make it seat. And if we take it to the other spring, 
Uh, yeah, it's a little wide. Maybe, let's see here. 128, 129 ish. So there you go. All right, here are the two springs compared and you can see the wire on the stock spring to the left is significantly larger. I think it measured at like 1.18 or 1.21 or something. Uh, on the right side, it's 0.81 inches. So considerably smaller and the uh, right side spring is taller. I've heard everything from you cut one coil off, which would be about right here and make it pretty equal in height. I've heard one third of a coil, which I guess would be about that much here, maybe about like that. Um, I think that's probably where I'll start and it'll be a little bit taller, but I think I can sag the control arm a little bit more. Uh, I can push it down and get it lodged in there. Um, I expect that since this is not a stout of spring, it's going to have to compress a little bit more to get the preload to support the weight of the vehicle. Um, but it's all guesswork because there is nothing scientific here. Um, let's see, I was able to grind the inside of this spring using a, uh, let's see, it was a L head grinder or a, uh, just a, your basic grinder, um, rolling it around inside like this to, to carve out and hit the high spots. It actually matches up really nicely. It's fairly round, um, works pretty well. And Came out a little bit, uh, a little bit cleaner than I expected. So I was able to put the uh, the micrometer to it, and it all fits. So that should seat on nicely. And I just got to make sure that when I cut, I make sure that I don't cut this end off because then I'm gonna really be upset. It took probably an hour grinding to to get it there. All right, I've got the spring in position. Um, you can see that's the part I cut off. It was a one third of a coil. Um, if you're going around the circle. And uh, basically I was able to seat it in the bottom and hammer it into the top. You can tell it's just balanced on the tip of that spring. So I took a, another piece of cord. Um, hopefully that will retain until it gets loaded up enough that it sits on that seat. Um, if not, that'll be a new problem. But uh, I had to use a ratchet strap here in order to uh, crank the control arm down. The uh, bushings and everything at the corners of the control arm are very tight. So we'll see how this goes as I ease off that um, ratchet strap. Obviously staying clear in case this thing takes a hike. I've got the spring seated and kind of going up in steps. I use the, uh, basically I released the ratchet strap and the control arm really didn't go anywhere. So um, I took it off. I used it to retain the spring, uh, pulling it inboard so that it would stay there long enough to seat on the carrier. Um, you can see that that's happening and uh, now I was, I was lifting uh, with the jack to push the control arm into place. We've still got that tied in. I don't want it to go flying. Um, obviously, that's not going to be the best thing, but it's better than uh, being unrestrained. So now I'm going to try to get the shock in, and if I can get that thing up and pinned, then that's kind of uh, free reign to then go ahead and start compressing things back into place, and it's all retained where it can't go flying, it can't come off the seating. Um, but kind of doing this in steps, trying to take baby steps and load things slowly so that we don't go from a little bit of energy to a lot of energy quickly or vice versa. So I've got the uh, right rear back together. Um, it went fairly straightforward. I guess the first thing to do was to lodge or pull the uh, control arm all the way down, um, lodge the spring in here. I kind of banged it in place with a hammer, suspended it back here with the strap so that it wouldn't come flying in my face and would stay put long enough to get some load on it. Um, then was able to lift up the control arm a little bit, put the first bolt, this bottom one, in the bottom of the shock. I had to fully compress the shock in order to fit it through the hole geometry wise, just because the stuff I had in the way. But once I did that, um, was able to get it more upright than pry the shock to extension while it was inside the spring and then uh, slowly lift up on the control arm and get that back in place. Then the next thing that went in was, uh, let's see, lining up the um, half shaft and putting this back on, sealing it up, and then uh, putting this bolt back in and the cover and cap. I used a ratchet strap to pick the control arm up high enough to clear the ball joint stud and uh, used a jack to move this back in like that in order to line up the ball joint 
then put the uh, castle nut on, which is probably the biggest problem of all, lining up the split pin when that was done. Then uh, took this out, refilled it with gear oil, and tires ready to go back on, and then we'll put it on the ground. Complete. After a first short drive around the block, it made about an inch of ride height difference from the center of the hub to the fender. I've still got a camber issue, but that will be the next challenge to attack.